All right. Behringer has long been the company that people love to hate. For decades, they made knockoff versions of other companies' products, and overall, the quality of the products was a little subpar. I speak from experience having owned a few of their older products, mixers and that sort of thing. They often had the lowest price tags on their gear, but that was to be expected from products that were made with lesser quality materials, right? Enter the Behringer Swing. Ah. 32 key USB MIDI controller, keyboard with 64 step polyphonic sequencing, chords and arpeggiator modes. Many have pointed out that it looks, well, it's like an exact copy of Arturia's product, the key step. And it is. Many people seem to be upset that Behringer is somehow disrupting the market, doing irreparable damage to companies by making a copy of the device. I'm more of the mindset that, hey, it happens all the time. This is literally one example of millions of products that have been knocked off. So why all the hate? Ah, yes, because Behringer is the company that everybody loves to hate. The same company that struggled for years with quality control while providing low-priced while still highly usable music making devices. The same company that a number of years back acquired Midas and have seemed to fix a vast majority of their quality control issues and now have moved on to provide you with all the synthesizers you lusted after as a kid but were too expensive to ever own at an insanely low price and often well under a thousand dollars. And now the same company is attempting again to disrupt the market with another great product for making your music even better, the Behringer Swing. That comes with the promise of a free DAW in the future that works with the hardware, and somehow people are still upset. This is the same company that remade the ARP 2600, and it's been said to be even better than the Korg remake, and in many ways, better than the original itself, which is crazy. The same company that as soon as it could started making original synthesizers like the DeepMind 12 and mixers like the X32 and eventually the Wing that completely disrupted the market because of the massive amount of features that they have for such a low cost while also maintaining a solid level of quality. In regards to the X32 mixer, which was released shortly after acquiring Midas, I think we should all as an industry recognize that Behringer has upped their game and are no longer poor quality. The X32 in the live sound world has sort of become the industry standard for how many venues sound around the world. You'll have a hard time finding much of anyone talking badly about the X32 online. On Amazon, it's got a solid five out of five stars with 107 ratings, four out of five stars on Sweetwater out of 105 ratings, and four out of five on B&H with 20 reviews. In fact, as far as I can gather, one of the only bad things about the X32 is the stupid smartphone holder they put on the right side of the front that became instantly outdated as soon as it was released. Further to my point, Behringer is far from the first company or only company to copy product designs. Car manufacturers, camera companies, furniture companies, software companies, everybody is copying each other. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, yeah, Scott, but the Behringer swing looks exactly the same as the Arturia Keystep. And I'd say you're right, however, I'd also usher you into the world of camera manufacturers, where literally every camera is a copy of every other camera. And as soon as someone does something slightly different that seems to capture people's attention, every other brand follows suit. Just look at the success of the Sony a7S, for instance. Sony completely shook up and overtook the market for video cameras because this camera was just so incredibly great at recording video that its small form factor body became a trend in Canon and Nikon and Fuji. They all started making the small mirrorless cameras that look almost identical. In fact, if you covered up the logo, you'd have a hard time telling what camera someone was shooting with or holding. Behringer themselves released a statement in regards to people's action about the copied product. A quote in reference to the competition law, and I'll read it here. The competition law was designed to avoid companies creating a market monopoly and stifle innovation, which would be detrimental to the rights of the customers to expect better offerings. The law was specifically designed to encourage everyone to fiercely compete, even when it means over the same functionality and design. Provided intellectual property, such as utility, functional, and design patents, as well as trademarks, etc., are respected. 
How many Fender Stratocaster or Gibson Les Paul clones are there out there in the guitar world? And how many SM58 clones are available? How many cars or mobile phones look alike? It's not surprising that Gibson recently lost a substantial legal case trying to prevent others from making V-shaped guitars or Fender who lost all trademark cases related to their Stratocaster design. The reason is simple. The law encourages competition and provides maximum freedom for companies to engage head on, all for the benefit of the customer. We are spending large amounts of resources on innovation, which is reflected in products such as the X32, XR18, Flow, DDM4000, etc. This made us the global market leader for analog and digital mixers. And over the years, we have built an extensive patent portfolio. However, we also clearly choose to follow successful brands and products while adding more features and or competing on price. Much of our innovation is invisible to the customer as it relates to our highly advanced and automated design and manufacturing process. And for that, we are spending hundreds of millions of dollars. For this reason, we have become strategic partners with Microsoft, Siemens, Adobe, and many other tier one companies as we are pushing for extreme digitization and automation. The follower marketing strategy is a very common business model in any industry, which is enabled by law to encourage competition. With our new Swing MIDI controller, we followed an established concept, but of course wrote our own firmware with added functionality. However, these unique features will only come to life when we launch our free DAW. The free Music Tribe DAW will form the heart of an incredible ecosystem where all of our controllers, synthesizers, and drum machines, etc., will integrate seamlessly, thus dramatically improving connectivity and workflow. This will make it incredibly easy for our customers to create, edit, and share their music. Only our upcoming controllers will feature total integration with our synthesizers, drum machines, digital mixers, and other music drive equipment, while also offering standard functionality with all third-party products. For anyone familiar with the industry landscape, Arturia has been cloned for years, worldwide, mini, midi, etc. While the company has also been borrowing from others with their VST replicas of legendary hardware synths, open source code from mutable instruments, the expressive touch controller, or the registration known as DX7 and Synthy Marks. Equally, our own analog Xenix mixers and many other products have been widely cloned. We will absolutely continue to deliver innovative products, but also follow our competitors as we expect our products to be cloned. Fair play. Well, it all seems to make sense. I say all this to point out that while Behringer does indeed copy design sometimes, it's important to know that all companies do this and at least Behringer is trying to bring down the price, meaning you've got a more robust home studio or live sound rig. It's important to understand that to a layperson, it might seem like they're doing some terrible thing and stupidly opening themselves up to a world of lawsuits and litigation, but they're not at least no more than any other company that makes products in a competitive market. Not only that, but in China and Amazon, actual patent infringement is insanely rampant and actually very bad for the economy. Imagine if every company in the music industry flooded Sweetwater or B&H with their own version of the key step, all with crappy logos, generic and faulty drivers, and parts that are dead on arrival like many of the Amazon products I've received. When you look at it in this light, Behringer putting their own spin on Arturia's key step doesn't really seem so bad. In the end, it's just another MIDI controller with a sequencer, arpeggiator, and groove, and they're selling it for a little bit less, which is cool. They have, however, gone beyond a pure copy and implemented their own firmware that works with their soon-to-be-released free DAW. Behringer is almost single-handedly bringing all the devices you dreamed of owning down to an affordable and reasonable price, which is challenging the market, and that's a good thing. Just 20 years ago, you'd be lucky to own an MPC or a keyboard workstation and maybe a four-track tape recorder and a microphone. Only the big studios could afford multiple synthesizers, giant mixing desks, and all the gadgets in between. I'm not really excusing Behringer for making an almost exact copy of another company's device. I'm just pointing out that it's done frequently across all markets and that it's generally very good for the end consumer. It means that we get more capable devices with increasingly innovative technology while also paying the least amount of money for it. How you could be upset at that, I have no idea. 
One day, I'd actually love to have an entire B or C studio that's made entirely of Behringer gear. Imagine that. It would be really fun to show off and to use, knowing that everything is really inexpensive and easy to replace, and I'm sure I'd get a really great result out of it. Now that they're making a DAW, that dream is even more of a reality. Actually, I think Behringer is perhaps the only company that you could do that with. They're the only ones who make keyboards, synthesizers, microphones, speakers, sequencers, modular, monitoring devices, you name it. So in conclusion, I think what Behringer is doing by replicating devices is a godsend for musicians everywhere. Instead of focusing on the things that they are obviously not reinventing the wheel with, we should be focusing on the groundbreaking things that they are releasing, like all of their classic synth recreations, their new synths, like the, the DeepMind 12, their new modular gear, and the mixers like the X32 and the, the Wing console. Let's focus on making music and having awesome music gear to make it with. It's all really, really exciting, and there's never been a better time to make music. If you don't like something, don't buy it. As for me, I'm going to be enjoying having more toys to play with. So what do you think? Are you excited about the new Behringer gear? Are you happy or upset about the Behringer swing? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to give me a like and subscribe. I'm Scott Brio. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you on the next one.